Hey guys, Uriel came here, and I'm very excited because today uh, I'm interviewing a um, a real a real uh, trailblazer, uh, someone who's made a a real big mark in the health nutrition industry, and uh, he is the owner of RenegadeHealthShow.com, which is one of the pro- probably one of the most popular health sites um, that I've come across, that a lot of people have come across in, in the last couple of years. And uh, it's none other than Kevin Gianni. So, Kevin, I'm really excited to have you on the call today. We're going to be talking about, uh, specifically today, we're going to be talking about digestion. And um, it's a very important topic. Kevin obviously understands digestion fairly well. And we're going to dive right into it. So, thank you very much for joining me today, Kevin. Yuri, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be on this call and to, to be here for your for your listeners, for your, your fans, and, and to maybe give some some fantastic information about how you can improve your digestion. Yeah, definitely. Um, so why don't we why don't we jump right into to the meat and potatoes about this uh, of, of this topic? What is the importance of good digestion? Great. Well, first I'm going to stop you and say meat and potatoes might not be the best thing to uh, <laughs> to, to eat for perfect digestion, but <laughs> but, but definitely um, um, we're going to be talking about things that you can and and, and things that may not be the best or optimal. For digestion, but the importance is this, and I'm going to tie it into to a little bit of of my personal story with digestion because this is how I, I became somewhat of a reluctant, uh, I would say, reluctant expert in in digestions because I had my own digestive problems. But the importance of digestion is that you can be eating the healthiest diet on the planet, but if you're not digesting your food and assimilating it, means which means absorbing it, then you're not going to be healthy. And I found that out the hard way. And so for me, my own personal experience with digestion is that I, I was bit by a tick. I used to live in Connecticut, so I was bit by a tick. And I got a big old rash, an EM, which is a sign that I have Lyme disease. And now I'm a natural health guy, and so I like to treat things uh, or to, to look at things in a way that, that's natural first. And then if I have to use any sort of Western-type medicine, then, then I'll, I'll you know, kind of judge the situation. So I called two of my, you know, my most my high my top mentors in in the natural health world. Both of them are doctors. They've been practicing each for over 30 years. And I called them and I said, you know, what can I do naturally for Lyme disease? And to my surprise, both of them said, take antibiotics. <laughs> and, I, and you know, and this is not, you know, this is this is something that you know you read on the internet. You know, you're, you're reading all these different, you're reading books. You know, you, the natural approaches to everything. But the two doctors, natural doctors, have been treating that people naturally for for over 30 years each, so 60 years experience. They both said take the antibiotic. And so you know, wow. there was there was some weight behind that. And I said, you know, I'm probably gonna I'm gonna listen to you guys because that that makes sense. So I took 20 21 days of antibiotics, doxycycline, and what happened was. Um, my, like I got rid of the Lyme, but as a, as a side effect of the antibiotics, I had a massive, massive digestive um, problem. And what happened was all my gut flora was wiped out, and I, I got candida, which is a, you know, an overgrowth of candida, a fungal infection of candida, which is it's a yeast that is generally normally in our body. But when, when you, when you re- eliminate um, your, your gut flora, this starts to flourish. So mm-hmm. what happened was I've spent, I spent the last, my gosh, I'd spent, I'd spent the last, after that happened, this was maybe about three and a half, four years ago now. So I spent about two and a half years trying to repair my digestion from this candida infection. So, so, and what I learned, again, was that I was eating a really healthy diet, but I was getting sicker. So my, my, my body was starting to, to get very thin. Um, I, was, I was getting weaker. I was getting more tired. My muscle um, tissue was, was starting to kind of deteriorate. So, so what I learned was that the instant I started to repair my gut and repair the way that my digestive system operates, using some of the things that we'll talk about in this call, uh, the, the better I felt, the more energy I, I, I got from, from, from my food, uh, the, the more I was able to be you know, the vibrant person I was before. So, so gut health is very important and because, because it, it literally is the gateway um, that your food takes um, to get into your body in order for it to do all the multiple processes that the nutrients um, do when they're in your body. Absolutely. And, and maybe just for people who don't understand the uh, atomic power, if you want to call it that, of antibiotics and what, that, what they do to your, 
to your gut floor. Maybe just explain what happens when you take antibiotics and why it, it really damages uh, that whole balance in, in your intestines. Sure. So, so what antibiotics are? For those, I'm sure pretty much everyone knows, uh, you know, what antibiotics are. But antibiotics basically are they are exactly what they are: antibiotics, anti-life. Um, and so, an antibiotics in terms of bacteria, they will destroy um, any sort of bacteria that that is in your gut. And and if you take them, I believe, uh, you know, and and I can't I can't know this exact. This is not an exact stat, but I was I was reading recently that that I believe that if you take um, antibiotics uh, over a period of a week. Um, they'll destroy 30% of the bacteria in your entire body. And now there are trillions of bacteria in your body. So, so that's, that's a lot. That's actually, that's actually a very significant amount. And, and some people think that we're actually more bacteria than we are anything else, um, which is kind of an interesting kind of thought. But, you know, well, that, that's for another call. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, so, so, so specifically in the gut when you take antibiotics, the, the bacteria form a biofilm around your, your small intestine and your colon. And as the food is passing through, the bacteria help to digest some of, the, some of the nutrients in order to make them more easily assimilated into your systems. And so if you, a couple things happen. One, the bacteria, there aren't any bacteria there to help digest the food anymore. So, so that's a negative. So you don't get some of the nutrients that you had before. The second thing that happens is that is that as this biofilm is eliminated, food be, can become more abrasive in the small intestine. So this means it can cause more inflammation. And the secondary effect of this inflammation is when the inflammation starts to happen, two things can occur. One, the passageways in your small intestine where the nutrients go through, they can either close up, so they're inflamed, so they, they close up, like so when you have, um, say you have a, uh, you get bit, you get stung by a bee close to your eye. I don't know if anyone's ever had that happen before. And like your your eye just swells up to the point where it closes, so you can't see out mm -hmm. of it. So the food can't get through, so the nutrients can't get through. Or on the opposite side, it swells up enough so so that the 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 passageways become larger, so larger particles can come through. And and what's really negative about that is that's you know kind of a, that's a that's the beginning of leaky gut syndrome when when larger particles can get through. You're, they, they get through, your body doesn't recognize them, and it causes an immune response. And so when this, and a negative immune response, because these are invaders, at least that's what the body views it as, and this can cause inflammation throughout the entire body, can weaken the immune system, can cause you to get sick, cause you to have allergies, and really causes a, a serious breakdown of that protective system. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's a whole cascade of events that we want to avoid. And I think, unfortunately, most people suffer from it to some degree. Um, yes. that's, that's obviously why we're having this, this talk right now, because digestion is, is, is massively important. Um, so what's, what, in, in your experience, what's the biggest mistake uh, most people tr have made when they're trying to better their digestion? You know, most people just assume that, that you know, as you get older, <laughs> that your digestion is going to decline. I mean, I think, that's, I think that's the biggest mistake. And most people assume that they don't have a digestive problem. So, so the, there's, there's, two, there's two things here. So, so if, if chances are you're, you are having some sort of digestive problem, if you've taken antibiotics before, if you, have, if you drink uh, tap water, chlorinated water, so you want to filter your water, or if you, if you have any type of stress, because stress will interfere with your gut floor as well. So I don't know anyone out there who doesn't have any stress, so, so listen up, guys. <laughs> this call is for you. you know, we, we need to make sure we repair our gut because, again, the more nutrients we get over the span of our lifetime, the healthier we're going to be for that same period of time. So that's, that's important stuff. The, the second thing is, and I'm going to give you a very per, you know, I already gave you a personal story about me, but let me give you a personal story about my mother. Um, she, when we went home for the holidays, we've been traveling around the country speaking and and, and lecturing and doing all these things and meeting incredible people, learning about interviewing experts about digestion and other things. We went home for the holidays. I was sitting down at dinner with my, with my, my family, and, and my mother happened to ask me, said, hey, what do you do for, for like, stomach ache? And I said, what do you mean? You know, do you have stomach ache? She said, yeah. She said, every morning when I wake up, I have this awful, like, stomach ache, and I just don't know what to do about it. And, and I've been to the doctors. They don't know anything about it. And, 
And, you know, I just think that it's because I'm getting older. And I said, well, maybe it's not. I said, you know, maybe I can give you a few things to try to see if they work. And she said, oh, that sounds good. You know, I, said, I don't know if they will. You know, <laughs> my, mom, <laughs> my mother's from an older school. She's like, I don't know if they will, but I'll, but I'll try it once and see if it works. So I said, here, let me, you know, generally as, as you get older, your HCL production, which is hydrochloric acid uh, production, starts to lessen. And your enzyme production uh, starts to lessen, and these these are are released in your in your stomach. So that's what's helping you uh, initially break down your food. And so I had a hunch that maybe this is what was, what was happening with her. So I gave her one HCL capsule, and I gave her two enzyme capsules after dinner that night, and we all went to bed. The next morning, she literally <laughs> like ran down the stairs, and she said, "She said, Kevin, she said." I cannot believe how good my stomach feels today. And I said, what do you mean? She said, every single day for the last three or four years, my stomach has been amazingly upset in the morning. And today it's absolutely, I feel nothing. It's 100% better. And I said, well, great. I said, we might be honest with them, but let's try it again next day. Let's try it again the next night and see what happens. So she did. Came down the next morning just even happier than she was the morning before. I said, this is really working. Since then, I have, you know, if you, and, and you're, you might have, have the same issue with your family, but mm-hmm. I have tried to tell my mother a thousand things that would be helpful for her, but this one thing she still does to this day, so she's been doing it almost for, for, for let's see, six or seven months now, and that's a real success because now she's being, now on, on, a, on a physiological level, she's getting more nutrients into her system because she wasn't able to ingest the food that she was eating before. So this is really important. This, and this probably, I don't know the answer to this, but this probably will increase the quality of her life for a long period of time. And I think also the fact that she doesn't have that pain anymore is probably the biggest reason why she kept doing that, right? Totally. Because, you know, who, who wants to wake up with that kind of stomach pain every day? You don't. And, and, she, didn't, but, and she had resigned herself to thinking that this was going to happen continually. Yeah. You know, and, and that's, Absolutely. you know, that's just what... <laughs> It's amazing what, 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 when you learn a little bit more about what you can do, it's what works and, and what, what does. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I've been using digestive enzymes for I don't know how many years, but the same thing with me. When I, when I discovered their power, uh, it was just like I don't even eat a, a cooked meal anymore without, without an enzyme or HCL because it's yeah. just so powerful. Um, that's great. What, are, what do you think are, you know, if you had like three secrets that, you know, maybe not many people know about, regarding digestive health, but they, that they really should understand, what would they be? This, one, this one's coming out now, but, but I think it's something that, that needs to be, be shared even more, is that, is that the digestive system is really uh, one of the major uh, factors in, in your immune health. So, mm-hmm. so, you know, people are learning this now. People used to think just the thymus, which is one of your endocrine glands, uh, it was was kind of running the immune system, so it was you know signaling the production of white blood cells and things like this. But your your gut is is really a center or a hub for immune function. And and again, the reason why is because if there's any type of inflammation, there are white blood cells waiting to what to make sure that you know you're you're not getting any sort of infection into your system because you know that's like literally like sneaking in the front door, <laughs> you know, of, of, of the bank and robbing it, right? You know, you know this, is, this is something that, that you know, is, is, is really the easiest way for any type of infection to get in. So, mm-hmm. that, so, so any type of, of gut issue that, that involves allergens, that's causing inflammation, uh, you know, is going to severely affect your immune system. So, so a lot of natural doctors now, they're looking towards the gut health first in order to identify you know, other ways to help the, the, the patient with other types of issues. So if you're having allergies, if you're having autoimmune disease, uh, if you're having inflammation, um, you know, it, run, it runs the gamut, but if you're having these things, this is, this is the first place to look. And so, so some, some, peop, some naturopaths that I know won't even treat any of the other symptoms that a person has until they actually start working on their gut. So it's a, I mean, that means a lot because, you know, this is, this is a newer model. Uh, the second is acne is that a lot of acne is, is directly related to your gut. Uh, so your gut health, your gut uh, health or your, or your gut um, uh, environment um, is going to determine if you have acne or not. There's also a horm- hormone component to that too. So it's not only your digestion, but, but digestion is a good place to start if you have acne problems or if you've been suffering for acne for a long time. And then the third is, is in terms of, of gut secrets, 
is that a lot of times when, when people are experiencing different types of, of challenges with their gut, it's because of, uh, you know, invaders that have come in over time. Maybe you went to Mexico, drank the water, or if you, you know, have a, a candida or an excess yeast infection or something like that, that can really cause havoc on the digestive system. And it's something that most Western medical professionals don't acknowledge or they don't really know what to do with. And if you're wondering, you know, if you have any of these things, a great way to, to determine if you do have them is to do a stool test and that will determine if there's, if there's actually any of the, the DNA of these different type of harmful organisms that, can, that, you, know, that you can start to, to then figure out a protocol to help eliminate. Hmm, interesting. Very cool. Um, actually, it's funny because I actually just had a question and somebody asked me on Facebook today about, uh, about acne. And it's, oh. um, you know, they don't, most people don't consider, you know, the way they, their skin appears to be related to, you know, what's happening on the inside. But I guess, you know, if everyone's digestive health was a lot better, then proactive would be out of business. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, here's the yeah. thing. You know, when I, was, when I was younger in high school, I had acne, and I would use acne creams. I, I would use, you know, all these different things on my face, but I never even thought. I mean, as a, I was a young kid, but, and my mother didn't even, never even thought that maybe it was the fact that, that you know, I'm lactose intolerant, uh, which, mm-hmm. which I am. Um, that, that, that I would that, that that would be the cause of it, and and immediately when I stopped eating dairy, after I went to a Tony Robbins seminar, and and you know everyone gets all excited, and then he suggested not eating dairy. You do anything that Tony says at the end of the event. Yeah. And uh, and I stopped eating dairy, and and my acne, my acne on my back, acne uh, razor burn underneath my my neck, it completely went away. It completely went away. I mean, I had years of suffering as a kid. And that was just the one thing for me. Now, will that work for someone else? I don't know. But, but starting with the digestion, starting with foods, foods that are inflammatory, is really a, a really great place to start. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, okay, so now that we, we understand the importance of digestion and, and, and what happens if it's not working properly, how, how can people tell, how can somebody tell if, if their digestive system is not working properly, if they're having problems digesting? Are there there's signs or symptoms that yeah. may be present without necessarily having to go to the doctor? Yeah, absolutely. You know, like my, mother, like my mother's experience, it was, it was stomach pain. But here's a list mm-hmm. of, of some other things. Gas, you know, excessive gas. And that could mean either your digestion is not working or your, your, the, food, the way that you're eating foods, you're combining foods um, can, be, can be incorrect. Uh, any, sort, any sort of bloating or, or pain, uh, indigestion, heartburn, Heartburn is usually a sign of low HCL, so that's a pretty good sign that you're not getting enough HCL to help break down your food. Constipation or, or diarrhea, those are, mm-hmm. those are also, also two. So anything that, that involves you know, the, any sort of pain in the, in the gut after eating, maybe, maybe an hour or two or three after eating, uh, anything that involves gas or bloating, constipation, diarrhea, those are all going to be signs that, that, that you really should consider looking into your digestion and, and figuring out more about, uh, you know, what may be your issue. Cool. And I guess that just comes back to the fact that, you know, really kind of listening to your body, tuning into, yeah. you know, what your body's trying to tell you is a very important aspect of, uh, of, of improving your health. Absolutely. Uh, all right. So considering, okay, somebody, you know, has these symptoms, they, uh, they recognize, okay, there might be some digestive difficulty happening. How can somebody – what are some steps that, what are maybe two or three steps that somebody can yeah. take to better the digestion, and how long does it usually take? I guess it obviously depends on the individual for improvements to be seen. This, this is a great question. Usually one of the, the, the first things, if you look at your digestive tract in terms of steps, right, you have your mouth where you're producing saliva. There's also bacteria in your mouth, so the bacteria is, is, is leaving with the saliva down into your stomach. The saliva is starting to break down complex carbohydrates. So, I mean, there's, you know, that's the first step. The second step is your stomach. So that's, that's the release of HCL, the release of enzymes. Uh, that's where, you know, a lot of the food is starting to break down. And then it goes into the small intestine where you're releasing bile that's helping to emulsify the fat. Um, it's releasing uh, alkaline salts, which are making sure that, that, you know, the contents of your stomach don't burn your small intestine um, and because the pH is too low. And then there's your colon where you're absorbing water back, you're absorbing nutrients back, and then you're evacuating everything. So, so there's, you know, one, two, three, four steps. Some people will argue there's probably more, but, but you know, those are, the, those are the basic steps. So the mm-hmm. first step is to, is to make sure that your mouth is clean. So to make sure that, you know, people who have 
uh, you know, bad bacteria colonizing in their mouth, that bacteria is going down. Every time they eat, it's going down into their stomach, and then if it makes it through the acidic environment in the stomach, it's going into their gut and it's colonizing there as well. So that's the first step. You want to make sure that your, your mouth is clean. Um, this, and, and, you know, use antibacterial, antimicrobial type soaps, or, or tooth soap is what we use. Um, it's, it's a tooth product. It doesn't have any chemicals, and it's antimicrobial. So this is a powerful tool that a lot of people don't know about. The second step is your stomach. You know, take some enzymes when you eat. Um, you know, don't overdo it. Some people overdo enzymes. Don't overdo it. Take some enzymes when you eat. And you may or may not want to experiment with some HCL. You don't want to take too much HCL because it can create too much of an acidic environment in the stomach, and that can start away to eat away at the stomach lining. But, you know, taking um, a little bit at a time, um, not taking it till you feel warmth in the stomach. If you feel warmth in the stomach, that's too much. If you feel like vomiting, that's way too much. Um, some people have told this to me. I said, why didn't you stop? And they said, well, I, don't, I didn't know. And I said, well, you know, we've got to be real careful about this stuff. This is not, um, you know, this, is, <laughs> this isn't eating an apple or anything like that. So yeah. the HCL, the, the third step through the gut, uh, what you want to do is you want to eliminate some of the allergenic type foods that can cause, um, that can cause inflammation um, for a short period of time. You don't need to do it for, for the rest of your life, but things like dairy, nuts and seeds, gluten, um, soy, those, those are all, those are three that can, that can definitely cause types of inflammation. And then for your, and, and, and then add in um, probiotic type foods, uh, fermented foods, they, they, those can be very helpful. And then for your, your colon, it's somewhat controversial, but, but I do like to, to recommend some sort of colonic or colon irrigation every once in a while just to get everything moving and, and cleaned out. Mm. Cool. Very cool. And are you a fan of uh, supplemental probiotics, or are you more through, like, sauerkraut and kombucha and stuff like that? I'm, I'm into whatever works. And so, yeah. so you know, for, for me, some people find fermented foods to work very well. Some people find that, that they don't. Some people find some probiotics are effective and some are somewhat inert and they don't work very well. Uh, some people react to certain probiotics. So, for instance, there's a certain type of probiotic that if I take it, um, my face breaks out. I have no idea why. But I just avoid that one, and I take another one. So, so it, it, it's really it's it's an experimental process. The thing about fermented foods is that you know that they're alive. Um, they've they've actually fermented um, the medium. So if it's a sauerkraut or something like that, and through the fermentation process, as they're breaking things down, they break out amino they break down proteins and form amino acids that can be more easily digested, and they also form B vitamins, which is which both are fantastic for the immune system. So, so there's extra added benefits of the probiotic food, the fermented foods. Awesome. Now, you mentioned uh, a couple allergenic foods to avoid to, uh, to, to better this, this whole situation. Are there specific foods that somebody should avoid or perhaps eat to help or alleviate these issues? Yeah, for, first off, the, the, the fermented foods, I think, are, are important. Not everyone will react well with them, but the majority of people will. So, so you know, follow you know, t take, start slow, see what happens, see if you react poorly or not, and, and, and run with it. At first, sometimes when people eat fermented foods, they will have a little bit more gas, but then that eventually mm -hmm. goes away. So don't let that deter you from, from, from eating something that's really healthy for you. Uh, aloe, particularly if people have uh, any sort of inflammation in the gut, aloe is a great way to soothe that inflammation um, until, the, until it goes down, until it, until it starts to heal. So, so drinking aloe in a smoothie in the morning or throughout the day. Uh, in fresh aloe, I don't, I don't like the aloe juices. Aloe becomes very uh, inert um, once, once it, it, it's put in a bottle and then sitting on a shelf for a while. So getting fresh aloe, you can usually find them at some of the health food stores. You know, we've been able to find them pretty much all around the country. Uh, and so you slice it up, fillet it, and put it into your, into your smoothie. It doesn't really taste like anything, so it's not going to add or, or subtract from, from the flavor of your smoothie. Um, and that's, that's really smoothing for the gut, soothing for the gut. And, and then uh, oregano oil. Uh, I'm a big fan of oregano oil. Oregano oil has been very effective in, in helping to balance my own gut flora. And so, so oregano oil in the form of capsules I prefer um, because, mm -hmm. because it's a very strong and powerful flavor. Uh, so it's yeah. concentrated um, oregano leaf. And so, so I like oregano oil to help balance gut flora and to, to kind of, you know, to, to even out. The, uh, the 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 flora the population of bacteria in your stomach. 
for sure. One of the uh, one of the tricks that we use is we actually, you know, we have like a one to one solution for the oregano oil, which is like lava, right? So like you put it in your mouth, it's game over. So we yeah. we actually just take um, empty veggie caps and we'll just kind of drop a couple of drops into that, and then just you know we've kind of created our own oregano oil capsule, which uh, right. which for me is the only way I'd, I'm going to take oregano oil, but it's it's amazingly effective. Yeah. 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 Cool. Great. Um, well, those are those are some really helpful tips uh, and some foods that uh, I, never, I mean, aloe. I've you know we've we've used aloe in the past, but not uh, not as fresh as you recommend. So that's that's a really good recommendation. Um, now now considering all this stuff, you guys also you have a, a digestive health program, don't you? Yes, we do. And, and and basically what what we've done is 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 I've taken the the countless hours of of research of interviews of, you know, all the information that I get, of, of consultations that I had with all the doctors that I had talking about my own digestion. And I, I've, I've taken all the information and I've put it into to a program. It's not the information that, from them, but the information that I've taken to, to help not only myself, but now literally hundreds of people uh, with digestive issues um, through this, this particular program. And it addresses all the different types of, of challenges that you can have, it, you know, gas, bloating, um, constipation, diarrhea, chronic diarrhea, uh, leaky gut, all these different types of things. And it breaks it down very simple so you, can, so you can go through the different steps and determine what to do, how to do it, what supplements to take, what foods to eat, what foods to avoid. And it does it in a real simple, easy to understand way. Because, you know, I hate it when I'm listening to a program and, you know, it gets, it gets really technical and, and really the only thing that I want is to get better. And so, you know, I want to get, get down to the, to the, like you said, meat and potatoes of it, and, or maybe the, the sauerkraut and uh, aloe of it to, uh, <laughs> to, to really help uh, understand what I need to do, how I need to do it, and, then what I, and how to know if it works or not. And this is what this program does. It's called the Perfect Digestion Plan. Cool. Awesome. And I'll be sure to, uh, to post the link be below this interview uh, for all of our listeners to get a hold of that because uh, I think it, you know, I, there's a reason we've had this interview because, you know, we, we believe that digestion is obviously very important. Um, so, so thank you very much again for sharing all that, Kevin. Um, and once again, everyone, there will be a link below this interview so you can check out uh, Kevin's digestion program. I highly recommend uh, at the very minimum having a look at it and if not grabbing it for sure. Um, so anything else to finish off before that we haven't kind of touched upon in this, uh, over the last couple of minutes? I think the best, the best, uh, advice that, that I can give is if you have any sort of, any of these symptoms, what I want you to do is just take one thing that you, that you heard from this call and start, and start trying it. And then if you want more information, check out the program and, and really dive into it. Um, that's going that's, that's how I end any of the calls because I think that taking action is probably the most important aspect that you have to improving your health. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you very much once again, Kevin, uh, for taking the time and sharing your wisdom with us. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you soon. Great. Take care.